Harden backs up and tries it again. Yes! He does it again! Harden met by Morris. Harden on the drive. Yes! In the front. Here comes a step back three. Again! Down the hatch it goes for Jay Harden. Step back. Unstoppable shot in basketball. It's unbelievable. Hun, how do you like it now? James flexing those muscles. James Harden did not want the calendar to change to January because December of 2018 was the best month of his career. NBA record, eight straight games, 35 and 5 tied the record for seven straight games with at least five threes. Joined Michael and Kobe as the only dudes to score 400 plus points in a 10 game span. Are you kidding me? And Thursday night at 1030 Eastern on TNT, it's a rematch of last year's West Finals. It'll be the Rockets and Warriors from Oracle. The first meeting went to the Rockets. That was at home in December, 107 to 86. Harden had 27 in that game. What do you expect? from the beard against Draymond, Durant, Curry, Clay, and the Dubs tomorrow night? Uh, probably something similar to what he's been showing us lately because when Chris Paul went down, I think a lot of us set up for a say, cool, said, how are they going to hold down the fort? We know there's a stretch of 10 games going to get hard for the Rockets. And like you said, when we came out of the break, James Harden literally hit another switch, another gear, and we know he can shoot the three. We know he can get to the rim whenever he wants to. But when I see 50 points, they cool and still get 10 assists and still get 12 assists, Rick, it lets me know that Dan Tony's system once again <laughs> fits him so perfectly because he can come down and shoot 10 straight possessions. Nobody says nothing. Or he can come <laughs> down and pass 10 straight possessions. No one says nothing because that's the way the system fits. And that's the way they want him to play. Yeah. What do I expect? Fireworks. I mean, I expect James Harden to continue to light these fireworks. The signal went up. The minute Chris Paul went out with that hamstring injury, you know what went through James Harden's mind. I got, I got to flip this switch and turn it up. The tough part about it for the opposition is when James Harden is not making shots, even when he goes those four- and five-minute stretches in games where he can't buy a three, he still can get to the free throw line. Yep. He's beating you one way or another with his shot, whether it's at the line or behind the three-point line. I love that he's answered this call, though, after starting off sluggishly this year. The Rockets, not in the space a lot of us expected them to be. It would have been easy for James Harden to, to let himself sit a little longer with an injury, mm -hmm. a bruised up body, this, that. He came back. He's dragged him from the abyss back into the playoff mix, put himself back into the conversation for the MVP award. That's the kind of stuff you want to see from a guy like this at this stage of his career. It's really fun to watch. The stats are mind-boggling. Eric Gordon, by the way, uh, I read before we came on, not expected to play tomorrow night. Uh, he's got a knee injury. He's officially listed as questionable. So we'll see uh, if he can go in that big TNT clash. Now, January has been a good month for the Golden State Warriors over the past four seasons, going 12-3, and 14-2, and 12-2, and, and last year 11-3. and three. That's 49-10. and 10. DZ, I did the mm, math. Yes, That's an please. 830 winning percentage in the month of January over the last four. And who knows? Steve Kerr, uh, maybe the return of Boogie Cousins will help you have another extraordinary January. I don't know if the question is who. Who or what carries the most weight? It's, it's more just um, a combination of all that stuff. Uh, I've got to feel good about putting him on the floor. Marcus has to feel good about being on the floor. Rick has to feel good about uh, his safety uh, going on the floor and not re-injuring himself. Uh, and so they're all tied together for sure, but I can't really put a percentage. I think we'll just know. When the game is. Interesting. I was trying to read between the lines there, and uh, <laughs> uh, Steve Kerr, you're too good. I really couldn't. There's nothing What'd you there. Find? You didn't read nothing? Uh, find nothing I, I, I read, but uh, no, it was too good. It was too little. <laughs> yeah, there was really anything to, to hold on to. But, uh, but here's the deal. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins did have a full practice uh, uh, here the last couple of days. He's getting closer to returning. Obviously, DZ and Sekou, they do not want to rush it. They want to be very careful and make sure he's fully right when he gets back. Do you think he'll even be back here in the month of January? Do you think that's a safe expectation? My gut feeling is no, just because I've been lucky to be out there the last few weeks with this players-only game. And, and once again, Steve, thank you for letting us in and watching. So I've been watching him playing one-on-one full court since December. 
It's just that they were not allowed us to put our cameras on it, but I was allowed mm -hmm. to watch it and talk about it. So Cuz is chopping at the bit, say cool. He's going to fit in nicely. The relationship with he and Draymond and KD, it's a strong relationship. He's planning on being around this team and franchise for a while. So all these reports coming out, one in contract after this, if he comes back and they wins, why would he leave? Why would you want to leave Steph? Why would you want to leave KD? Why would you want to leave Draymond? All the stuff that Clay has told us the last two years. I get paid handsomely, and I get a chance to win handsomely every year. Why would I want to leave? Let me ask you a question, because you've been out there. You, you've actually witnessed him yes. out there on the court. So, you know, they always say that TV puts 10 pounds on you. So you, you can't really tell from that. Uh, and, and Boogie Cousins has always been a guy that's been in good shape. But mm -hmm. talk, talk to me about Which, that. It, yes. Like, has he even slimmed down a little bit? Well, or? It's, it, when, you, when, you, when you're working out, you're eating right, you're in a situation, you can take control of your body. And one thing that's fun about Cuz is that he's smiling while he's at work. He's happy with his environment. You know, that uh, training staff out there is doing everything right. And Bob Myers being the head of that snake saying, no, we want to make sure you're a thousand percent. It's very similar when Steph was hurting recently. I said, Steph, why did you wait? He said, I could have come back three or four games earlier, but they wanted me to make sure. So that lets me know when Boogie steps on that floor and the way the ball's hopping, so we always talk about 25 and 15. Well, that was the cuz, the old cuz that had to get 25 and 15. Now, what he has to do now is go out there and play good basketball and play within the system, the numbers to take care of themselves. Yeah, to me, what Boogie's going to bring that nobody's factoring in is he's going to trigger fast breaks yes. for the Golden State Warriors by just being a huge presence around the basket. Think of how much rebounding Draymond and Kevin Durant have had to do and then getting the ball up the floor and trying to get them into transition. Now you got an opportunity where Boogie can take some of that pressure off, manhandle guys around the basket when he comes in. And it's not about Boogie running up and down, getting in the floor. That so much as him being the guy who helps instigate that with his presence around the rim. I think he'll be fine. I think Boogie's always looked bigger than he really is. It's right. Just because he's such a big hulking guy with the long arms. Right. But Boogie's never been a guy who's, to me, heavy or right. overweight for, no. uh, you know, a seven-footer. He's always been a little bit more athletic and nimble than people give him credit for. He's a big fella. I mean, he's one of these guys, what they call it, country strong? Country strong. Country Alabama strong. strong. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm curious about, you know, relationships and chemistry. And you watch the games and you see Draymond <clears throat> and, De and, and DeMarcus Cousins, you know, sit next to each other, talking, laughing maybe sometimes. When Draymond and Durant got into it, the peacemaker was, was Cousins, DeMarcus exactly. Cousins. Okay. So, so uh, is Draymond the boogie whisperer or, or what's going on here? <laughs> I think they're all each other's whisperers to answer your question because they all understand each other's personality. And I think USA Basketball, we've learned, we've learned now, has really helped all these relationships make sense. So now when you're around each other and you're playing for your country and now you get a chance to play, say, for your job, oh, wait a minute, I know what this guy really is about because I was around him over the summer and we were able to talk through some things. We saw it with D-Wade, what Miami did. So now with Cuz, he's like, wait a minute, I've made some good money. I'm with the franchise. It's everything they've talked about from day one when and Steve Kerr says it. Wait a minute. What what Bob? Uh the Marcus <laughs> Cousin wants to come play for us for only five million. I'll call you back. Because Steve Kerr didn't believe him. And he called Bob back and said, Bob, say it again. Yeah, we're about to get the Marcus Cousin for five million. Since that conversation, everything they've talked about has done this. So now it's a matter of him getting on the court and living up to the expectation of being a healthy Cousins for that team. Seku, were we not out here together when we got that news? Yes. Uh, doing we a free were. agency show? And we were like, Jaws on right? the desk. Like, <laughs> say, yeah, there you Cousins know. is going to the Warriors? What? You but you know what? The, the beautiful thing about it in, in this day and age when players are really captain in their own destiny 3D mm -hmm. is that Boogie Cousins recognized his situation and chose winning above all else. We don't praise these guys enough when they do it. We love to talk about somebody's contract mm -hmm. and how much money they make and whether or not they're living up to it. And are they putting in the work based on the money they make? Look at the work Boogie has put in just to come back. Mm -hmm. Think about the work ethic it takes to get all the way back physically from where he was in the injury he had. This is about Boogie earning the respect, I think, around the league that he feels he deserves. And in a winning situation, it's going to make it that much sweeter for Boogie yeah. Cousins when he gets on that floor for the Warriors because he's going to give them a pitch they have not had, not even with Andrew Bogut, in terms of a big man they could give the ball to and manufacture offense the way you will be able to with Boogie Cousins in your mix. He does the same thing Bogut did from a passing standpoint, but now he's a better ball handler. He can take it off the rim. He's a shot maker too. Well, Boogie isn't going to play tomorrow night, but the Golden State Warriors will and what 
a double header. Kawhi Leonard's Ooh, first return to header. San Antonio. Oh, that. the drama. Ooh. And then get you get afternoon. Curry in the Warriors, Harden in the Rockets. One of the best double headers of the year Thursday night on TNT. And it starts right here on NBA TV at 7 with Game Time. This is Game Time Live. And he can say that All Star is not a motivator, but his game perhaps speaks otherwise. What's most impressive to you about the improvement that he's made? Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's a similar sort of path that Kawhi Leonard traveled early in his career. Came into the league uh, as a defensive player, uh, has great length, and just has worked on his game. And in year three now, has emerged as a reliable, trusted uh, score sort of guy who can do everything offensively and defensively for the Toronto Raptors. And this is important, particularly as Lowry has struggled a little bit with his injury and he's out right now with a bad back. Uh, but Siakam has so emerged as someone that they can count on. And, and, and that's huge. And he, he talked about in that interview, you know, learning from, from Kawhi, learning from him, watching how he uses his length and his hands and just all the little nuances to the game. And so uh, a, a great example for him to have uh, a, a, a guy who's, you know, MVP in the finals, a guy who's you know, going to be in that conversation this year uh, as a potential league MVP. Uh, but Siakam stepping up and, you know, you ask that question, it, it's conceivable. He might actually be an all-star. He's having that kind of season. And if Toronto can continue to be at the top and, and possibly, uh, you know, be at, be at the top of the standings where they've been most of the time here uh, thus far this season, he has a chance. Well, it was also a career night for Kawhi Leonard with 45 points. So let's see how he did it. He was 16 of 19 from two-point land. He was also a perfect eight for eight in the restricted area. And you, Grant Hill, having perfected the mid-range game, seem like the perfect person to ask to break down his night. Yeah, yeah, perfected is right. Um, That's, yeah, I it, felt it, like it was the right word. <laughs> no, but Kawhi Leonard, I love the diversity of shot making. He's not settling for just long jump shots. He's getting to the rim, as you talked about. He's attacking in transition. Of course, his mid-range game is on point. But he's constantly forcing the issue. You're having the defense stay on their heels. You have to guess sort of what you're going to do and how to stop him. And he got it going right there. He was efficient, as you talked about. But everything was, was moving forward with force, as you saw in that highlight package. And we may not be talking enough about their defense because they're turning that high power defense into offensive opportunities. No, no, no question. I mean, their defense is, uh, I, I think, really, really one of the underrated parts of their game. And they have length. They have athleticism. They have trust out there on the floor. They have experience mixed in with youth. And you see right here, Greg Monroe plays this pick and roll perfect. And they secure the rebound and get out on the break where they're so, uh, so talented. And right here, Anunobi just making the effort, getting the steal, leads to an easy basket in transition. You can't defend against that if you're Utah. Turn the ball over. And of course, right here, once again, getting into the paint, active hands, Danny Green and getting out in transition for the easy basket. And I love this play right here, Greg Monroe, big guy, contesting at the rim without fouling, forcing a tough shot. And once again, you're off to the races, starting the fast break, getting baskets in transition off your defense, a layup right here is one of the recipes for success for these Raptors. Well, we can talk a lot about the Toronto Raptors, and it is, of course, warranted. But meanwhile, the Milwaukee Bucks are <laughs> off to